Please, y'all put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Mr. Mrs. Luca Amore. Hello, my lovelies. I wrote this today. It's short and sweet. I don't really know if it's finished or not, but... I'm gonna go ahead and give it to y'all tonight. <clears throat> this is called Love Song. Write me a love song. <clears throat> if you do, I promise that I won't sing it wrong. And you can sing along, mastering the art of melody while you're telling me everything I wanna hear harmonizing in my ear. Let's be clear, I want it nice and slow. Mike shed a tear like a sad song on the radio. No matter how far we go, I want to sing it loud in soprano or falsetto in the background, be piano. Baby, please don't let go. Strum my strings like a violin. So I cannot be confused about why I'm all in. And I'm all in. Your baritone is my closest friend. The way you serenade me is like medicine. I don't want it to end. So please write me a love song with some rhythm and some blues and make it last long. Loving you is right so I can be wrong. Let's sing it from our souls without a microphone. Mind alone and you got me gone. And that's it. I'm Roy G. Bivens, and this is how I'm living. Now most nights, I'll start off by saying the following will be said through my rose-colored glasses, but this is very serious, so I have to take the hat off and the glasses. Because, I don't know. My real name is Sean Mitchell, and I attended Rising Star Missionary Baptist Church from 90, 1997 to sometime uh, last decade, probably 2019. And uh, my childhood pastor, uh, Pastor Dean Benford, passed away at the age of 94 a couple weeks ago. And uh, he left quite a legacy. He uh, he, he pastored my, my church uh, long before I was even born. He was there for 73 years. Uh, he's in the book of Guinness, the Guinness Book of World Records. And so, uh, no persona tonight. I know uh, I'm new at this venue. Some of you haven't seen me before, but uh, I will be just playing Sean Mitchell for tonight. I wrote this today. And I call it uh, the legacy of D.N. Benford. One of the, the songs that he routinely would sing at church. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. He was the longest to ever do it in one pulpit. He had a certain grace, charm, and wit. For 73 years, he led Rising Star Missionary Baptist Church, and his appeal and charisma stood taller than Lurch. Pastor Dean Benford was a giant among giants, and within the Lord's will, he was always compliant. The greatest, one of the greatest orators the world has ever seen timeless biblical knowledge since the age of 14. Benford taught us how to interpret things and in a, a new way, getting us best prepared for a new day. I wish I could have written his memoirs before he died, yet and still, I take pride. Pride knowing I had 27 years knowing him and interacting with him. He was there for me when things got dim. It, for you see, Pastor Benford laid the foundation for my spiritual and mental well-being, giving me the sword I swung at the enemies of the dimension. And his wisdom was timeless, did I mention. So, so long, Pastor Benford, your wit, humor, Bible knowledge, and charity will be missed. But I know you've entered a land of eternal bliss. 
well done, faithful servant. And just how many times have you heard this? Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Rest in peace, Pastor Benford. Thank you, guys. IBIR TV Network. Coming soon to Roku TV. What's good, my people? Yeah. What's up, bro? All right. So, uh, do we have anybody in the house that is even familiar with super villains? DC, Marvel, Star Wars, anybody? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, cool. Then you'll relate to this. I wasn't spawned from an evil place. I was born from the hate harbored in the hearts of a hero's fate. A bane to your existence. Into the darkness I am reborn, no longer borrowing the shadows embrace. A villain. With a flex like flex strolling down Lois Lane orchestrating your doomsday. I say, none like me can't be contained within the phantom zone. You do better trying to bury me with the treasures contained within the catacombs. A villain joking and laughing with grenades as I walk them at your champagne glass tower. I'm a party crasher. I aim to claim Wayne's tower. A manner that I'm afraid of what I'll become. A general in Zod's army, numb to any abnormalities. Some will find I'm inevitable once you snap your fingers for me. And again, I say the force is strong with this one. Yeah. Did you catch that? Yes. And again, I say the force is strong with this one. Dark side, right reason, strategically calculating the demise of your rebellion. And you labeled me a hellion. You said I was the chosen, told me my day was not yet, held back the full force, but all the guardians in the galaxy couldn't quill my ego's threat. A villain, low key I seek to right these wrongs, but yet your blindness can't seem to see the right in my wrongs. Y'all weren't satisfied with the man I presented, I was minding my own business, thumbing through these pages, just chilling. You just had to rewrite the narrative to undermine me, I was willing. It's cool, just know you killed the manga in my mission. You had the opportunity to reverse your decision. You had the option to review and understand my rendition. Now, you must face the fate of the truth of the hate you've harbored in your heart. And I'm just a reflection of your inner villain. Yeah. yeah. So please help me welcome to the stage, Mr. Joe Mercado. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm not a rebel, Joe Machado. So I just wrote this poem uh, today. Oh. And um, oh, does anybody here do uh, yoga? Got any yoga? Yeah, okay. Good. I need somebody who does yoga. So uh, this is called Morning Yoga on the Beach. Assume it's not raining. The heat, not excessive. Wind within reason, but still a nice breeze. Tide should be lowish. Sun, not too high yet. The sand must be raked first, but not where it slopes. Remove any glass shards or sharp little shell bits. We can't have any dried up old shellfish, jellyfish slime. Now that it's perfect, we'll unroll our mats here and breathe with the waves that roll onto the shore. We'll start in Shavasana and focus on breath work. 
Let the wind kiss our toes. Let our shoulder blades sink. We will rise and find a mountain. The pose, not the landform. We'll perfect our posture as we gaze at the sea. We'll roll back our shoulders and hear our old bones crunch. We'll focus on balance when we move into tree. We'll listen to seabirds. We might hear a dog bark. The rumbling ocean will comfort our ears. We'll lunge just like runners. We'll swing both our arms up as we move into warrior. One, two, then three. We'll groan when our backs bend. We'll shake when our thighs burn. Yet we'll know pleasant tension is all that we seek. And when it is ending, we'll look like we're praying. We'll say namaste and be told what it means. We'll be rolling our mats up as it's getting too warm now, but our practice was perfect today at the beach. Yeah. Oh. Right, let me give you another one. Because, you know, Paul started us off with some of these um, poems about news articles from way back. And uh, I see all the, this kind of like planet thing here. And so it said, okay, I gotta read you this one called, does anybody remember like six years ago, Umuamua? Umuamua was observed by this observatory in Hawaii and uh, the, the head of, uh, uh, the, the, the head astrologer, astrologer from Harvard University wrote this paper because it was this object that came from outside the solar system. And it's the first time anybody ever observed an, an object that clearly came from outside the solar system go through the solar system. And there was a lot of speculation as to what the thing was because it didn't go through for very long. And so this is a poem about the paper from Harvard. It's called Umuamua. And that's a Hawaiian god from very far away, a visitor from very, very far is what it means in Hawaii. A million years of tumble reframed as just a hover until old soul and brood swept in and then out again like a lover. Star-eyed Pan caught that glimpse of faintest light, blinking lyrical, reflections from a projectile that was conspicuously non-spherical, and as closer to the great fire it drew, remaining frozen as the dead, with skin that shone like polished steel, for it emitted no infrared. Had it trapped true to Newton's trace, it might have scarcely raised suspicion, but a slight nudge seemed to lend its speed without any concomitant emissions. No more foreign a thing has come this way, nor one more unexpected, at least not one our feeble array of instruments has detected. An old starman coolly weighed the facts and every data he could measure he knew conclusions that were drawn in haste could be regretted long leisure. To suggest this thing, thin as a gossamer sheet that collected photonic propulsion on evidence even thinner still would risk, risk astronomic expulsion. It's built. I know it's built, he cried, as he labored o'er his paper with words he dutifully inscribed, of course, We'll need more data. Let's go. And it's a science thing. So, okay, here's the shortest poem I've ever written. It's two syllables shorter than a haiku. So don't miss it. It's called Counting Backwards from Infinity. Where do I even start? Okay, thanks. <laughs> I V I R T V Net coming soon to Roku TV. Subscribe now.
And without any further ado, please help me welcome to the stage, Rimbo! Rebel HTX on this rap. Um, this one's called Who Will Win. I haven't done this one in a minute. Where will I go when I pass? Because I am the shadow of a shallow man. We both have a very dark past. They say the good die young, so does that mean if I'm still here, I'm bad? I've done a lot that I regret, but respect the fact that I had to, to survive. But that does not make my actions justified, so will I be the last person to lie? Oh God, I hope not, because I've done so much good. My heart was contaminated by the hood and turns into petrified wood. That means the organic matter in my heart has decayed but the structure still remains and it's been that way for decades. I'm learning to love myself, so how am I supposed to love anyone else? Plus, I'm addicted to pain since the day that I came to this earth, I've been chasing the way that it felt. Uh -huh. So, does this mean that I'm going to hell? The older I get, the more I realize I'm two separate people. There's one side of me that tiptoes around like the Romeo and Juliet of evil, while the good me just curls up in a beetle over bucking mosquitoes and beaters and hypodermic fucking me. Come on. But I fight. I fight the good fight. The fight at night in my skin when the sin just don't sit right. And I pray, I pray, Lord, please take these voices in my head that sound just like the away, if you can. I know it's hard, cause he is I and I is him, and they get separation anxiety anytime you try to pull them apart. But one is light and the other is dark, and the battle is far inside my heart. So God came to me today and he said, when you pass away, it won't be because of the clogged artery. He said it'll be because the battle between good and evil finally got to me. Who will win, brother? Woo!